Welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within a week at strivescan.com slash WACAC. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And up first is Southern Oregon University. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can see my screen OK. And I'm sorry if you can hear the hum in the background. My refrigerator just kicked on, and I have an extremely loud refrigerator, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to talk about Southern Oregon University for the next few minutes. And first off, we are a public four-year university in the state of Oregon. We belong to the Oregon Public University System, which is similar to the Cal State or the UC system, just for Oregon. Uh, we have a little under 6,000 total students. So we're not a large university by any means, but we're also not tiny. Uh, we're small enough where you'll see somebody you know every day, but large enough where you'll see new people and meet new people all the time as well. Our average class size is just over 20 students and every class is taught by faculty. So you will get some great one-on-one -on -one attention from faculty. Uh, we do have 38 majors. And I'll get to those in just a minute. Uh, four residence halls, as well as student apartments on campus. And we do expect first year students to live on campus. Uh, we also have 13 men's and women's varsity sports that compete in the NAIA. Uh, most are usually ranked nationally, they do pretty well. And we'll also have over hundred clubs and organizations on campus to get involved with. So if you have not been to Ashland before, uh, we are located in the Southwestern corner of Oregon. This light blue line represents roughly uh, the five freeway. So if you're in California and you hop on the five and head north, Ashland is your first exit once you get into Oregon, just 10 minutes from the uh, California border. Also, we have an international airport located in Medford. So you can see all of those lines going into Medford. Um, companies like United, Delta, American, Alaska, and Allegiant all fly into Medford. And then that airport is just about 20, 25 minutes from campus. So easy to drive to, easy to fly to as well. Uh, we're located in what's called the Rogue Valley with a little over 200,000 residents. It is the fourth largest population area within Oregon. Uh, we're also located in a uh, sort of a touristy town. So the economy is totally based on entertainment, which makes it a really fun place to live and go to school because there's always a lot of things to do. Uh, also a great place for the outdoors. We have great access to all kinds of different outdoor activities. When I talk about the weather, a lot of times I'm dispelling rumors and myths. Um, Ashland, again, is located far enough south in the state that we don't have your typical Oregon or Northwest weather. We actually average less rainfall than the national average and about 20 inches less rain than you'll have up in Portland. Also have a lot of sunny days as well. Uh, I think yesterday we were right around, I think we were just a little over 70 degrees. So uh, we can get some really nice days throughout the winter and spring. Uh, we will get maybe four inches of snow a year. That's usually one or two snowstorms. We're still waiting on that snowstorm. Haven't really got a big one this year yet. But as you can see, this mountain right behind us, that's Mount Ashland, the tallest mountain in the Siski Mountain Range, and also a ski resort on top. So within 20 or 30 minutes of Ashland, if you want to go play in the snow, snowboarding, skiing, sledding, have a snowball fight, all of that stuff is really close to campus. Uh, you can see in the summer, our average high is 83, and in the winter, our average high is 50. These are, are our 38 majors. Uh, don't really have room to list all of our pre-professional programs, minors, certificates, micro-credentials. Uh, so if you don't see things like pre-med, pre-optometry, pre-physical therapy, uh, we have those programs as well. There's a more detailed list on our website, but these are our main uh, majors. If you see a little red dot behind the major, that means you can actually earn that degree in three years instead of four if you qualify. So that right there is going to save you 25% off the whole cost of your education and will also allow you to start working sooner, hopefully making money rather than staying in school another year and paying us money. 
Uh, that program that allows you to graduate early is called the Accelerated Baccalaureate Degree Program. If you haven't heard of the Western Undergraduate Exchange or WUI, it's a program that allows students from out of state to attend at a discounted rate. The rate that uh, students will pay from California is 50% higher than the Oregon resident rate. So you can see that's about a $13,000 discount off of the out of state tuition. And you'll maintain that tuition rate for as long as you're an undergraduate student at Southern Oregon. If you're from Northern California, and by Northern, I mean Shasta, Tehama, Trinity, Sitzkew, or Modoc counties, and you graduated high school after 2013, you'll actually pay the Oregon resident tuition rate. And most transfers from Shasta College, College of the Redwoods, and College of the Fifth Views uh, also will pay the Oregon resident tuition rate. So on campus, we have what we call the North Campus Village, which includes four residence halls, student apartments, family housing, also our main dining hall. We have two different dining halls on campus, but the main one is there right next to the residence hall. Also a brand new recreate, well, five or six year old recreation center uh, with a lot of great things inside for working out, staying active. It even has an esports lounge. We have an esports minor and an esports team and a climbing wall as well. Uh, we do allow students to apply year round. We're on rolling admissions. So that February 1st priority date uh, isn't entirely important if you miss it. Again, WUI is automatic. We also have merit scholarships for students from California, and we award those pretty much year round as well, too. So students with a 3.0 or a 3.2 or higher will usually get a merit scholarship on top of that WUI tuition rate. And lastly, we have a lot of virtual options, tours. We do a virtual presentation every Friday, uh, and we also do an application workshop every Tuesday. So thank you very much. Great, thank you. And next up is Eastern Oregon University. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian and I am an admissions counselor for Eastern Oregon University. I'll take a couple of seconds to see, um, I guess, to let you all see our campus. As you can see, we're surrounded by mountains um, so really a lot of opportunities to explore, uh, which I'll jump into uh, in a minute. A lot of those buildings that you see are uh, buildings on campus and it takes about nine to 10 minutes to walk from one corner of campus to the other corner and just kind of a, a very beautiful area. We live uh, in the heart of the Blue Mountains, so there's really a lot of opportunities to get outdoors. Eastern Oregon University is uh, located in Northeast Oregon, uh, so uh, opposite of Southern Oregon University. And we're very similar in the opportunities to explore. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're about two and a half hours from Boise and about four hours from Portland. So typically when students from out of state fly in, they typically fly into Boise or to Portland. There's also uh, an airport, a small airport in Pasco, which is about an hour and 45 minutes from our campus. Anthony Lakes, so we do have a lot of opportunities for students to try new things. And one of those things is definitely skiing and snowboarding. Anthony Lakes is about 40 minutes from our campus. And every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, our ski and snowboard club goes up to the mountain. And one thing that's awesome about Eastern Oregon University is if you don't have gear, you can actually rent it out for free. So skis, um, snowboards, um, jackets, snow pants, anything you can think of, you can rent it out for free from EOU. And then also Anthony Lakes is an awesome spot to check out during the summer. A lot of our students will go hiking there, uh, trail running, exploring all the different lakes. And again, it's about 40 minutes from our campus. The population of Legrand is about 13,000. So we are a small university located, um, excuse me, a, yeah, small university located in a small town on campus. We have about 1,500 students. So we like to say you get a private education for a public price. Um, and I will say that was probably my favorite thing about EOU when I was a student here was the opportunity to, uh, to connect with the professors. So as you can see, the average class size is less than 25. So your first year of college at EOU, you might be in classes that are anywhere from 60 to 70 uh, in those general education classes that every student has to take. But as soon as you transition into your major, 
you're going to be in, uh, in classes that are even smaller than 25. So your junior and senior year, you might be in classes that are anywhere from 10 to 15, which that's awesome as you're preparing to graduate from EOU and maybe apply for your dream job or get into grad school. So again, that one-on-one -on -one opportunity is really awesome at EOU. Popular program. So we currently offer 35 plus majors at Eastern Oregon University. And here on the screen, you can see a couple of the ones that are the more popular ones. So we were actually founded as a teaching school a long time ago. So education is very popular at EOU. We also do really well with biology, chemistry, biochemistry. And our chemistry program has been nationally recognized by the National Chemical Association for the past 10 years. Business is very popular along with agricultural uh, sciences. We do have a partnership with Oregon State University. And then we also ha have computer science, psychology, that are uh, popular programs along with pre-med and students uh, from EOU that get a pre-med degree. About 92% of them are accepted into med school. We also have pre-nursing for students who are interested in getting into nursing school. We have a partnership with Oregon Health and Science University here on our campus. So students will typically go to EOU for a year, get all their prereqs and then apply into the OHSU nursing program. And then last but not least, we have health and human performance for students who are interested in working in the health um, field, more along with uh, community health or being a kinesiologist along those lines. Much like any other university, we have support services. We have an awesome career center that focuses on providing internships for students um, at EOU. And that's something that really stands out about EOU as well as every student is required to have an internship or a capstone before they graduate from EOU. Many of those internships and capstones are paid. So that's kind of a nice little uh, thing about EOU. We also have student diversity and inclusion. If you like to get involved, learn about different clubs, that's a great opportunity to do that. Along with that, we have disability services, learning center, and then student health and counseling here on our campus. We do offer 50 plus clubs and organizations. So this is going to be um, what you're doing when you're not doing your major um, or when you're not doing your homework, right? So there's a lot of opportunities to get uh, connected with other students. One I'll highlight is our student government um, club. Uh, there's, I believe, 15 to 20 paid positions within that club, and it's a great opportunity to learn leadership skills. We also have Zumba Club. If you like to dance, um, Zumba is a fun opportunity, and it's not as easy as it looks, but it's definitely a fun time. And our Zumba Club meets every Wednesday from 5 to 6.30. We also have eSports. So not only do we have Video Game Club on campus, but we actually offer scholarships for students who are interested in eSports. Um, and overall, you could just see some of the different pictures that we have for the 50 plus clubs and organizations that we currently have. We also have an awesome outdoor adventure program where students who rent out equipment, again, it'll be free and uh, you can earn college credit at any, uh, any of those classes. We also have 15 collegiate teams and we compete in the NAIA division. And those are great opportunities to connect with coaches. And then living on campus is a requirement during your first year. And I'm gonna skip a couple. The last uh, thing on my presentation is our tuition and fees. Students from all the gold qualify for Western Undergraduate Exchange. And I'll be hanging out in the chat if you have any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, just a reminder to our audience, you can put your questions for all of our institutions in the Q&A. And next up is Linfield University. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Tiffany Anderson and I'm an assistant director of admission here at Linfield University. Um, short amount of time, so I'll try to speed through these as much as I can. So going from the public institutions here in Oregon, Linfield is a private liberal arts and sciences based institution. Uh, we are located here in McMinnville, Oregon. McMinnville is about an hour southwest of Portland, Oregon, about 45 to 50 minutes northwest of Salem, the state capital, about an hour from the coast. So we're located actually in a really nice pocket of the Willamette Valley here in Oregon. We're a renowned uh, Pinot Noir growing region. So we actually do have a liberal arts and sciences based wine program. Our institution is located across about 
200 acres or so. Um, just to give you some perspective, a football field is just a little under an acre. So we've got a lot of room to roam for some of our students. Um, we are a smaller institution in our size, about 1,400 students. One fact on that list that you see right there, one thing we're really, really proud about is our first gen population. Last year, I believe our cohort was about 30, 32% first gen, meaning first in their family to go to college. So students at Linfield really are coming from all over and from all different backgrounds, which makes it a really great campus to just meet new people and explore in a nice cozy town of about 35,000. Um, McMinnville, fun fact, is also home to the Oregon UFO festival. So if that's something you're interested in, it's a nice fun thing to explore. Um, this is a list of our majors. We have about 43 majors on our McMinnville campus here in McMinnville. Um, we have the College of Arts and Sciences and the School of Business. I won't get into all of them, but you can see the most popular ones listed right there. We do also um, have one of the oldest schools of nursing here in the state of Oregon. Our nursing campus, our nursing only program uh, is actually kind of very unique in the sense that you can apply to Linfield as a nursing major. You spend the first two years on our McMinnville campus completing your prerequisites. And after you complete those two years, fulfilling them um, to satisfaction, then it's a priority transition over to our Portland campus, our new 20 acre facility up in Northeast Portland, where you're only focused on uh, nursing. One thing about Linfield though, no pressure if you don't know what you wanna do, you, you need some time to explore, we allow that. Uh, students don't technically need to come in declared, you can come in undeclared. One of the ways we help guide students um, into helping them you know, figure out what they wanna do is through our what we call our Linfield curriculum, what other institutions might term the general ed requirements. Rather than asking students to set take a set lit list of classes and requirements, we provide umbrellas of um, basically goals that we want our students to be able to achieve uh, before they graduate. So, you know, whether that's fulfilling your ultimate questions or your vital past through the philosophy of dinosaurs or taking an art class, that's really up to you and your academic advisor, your faculty advisor, um, and your professors, of which most of our professors, over 90%, have their terminal degree. Uh, at Linfield, uh, Student-based research is of utmost importance to us. We really feel that students can learn best when they're getting hands-on experience. You can start research freshman year if you wanted to. Um, just some of the research projects our students have done, you know, whether you're interested in using the laser down in our bio lab to do um, laser nanoball technology, um, from what I'm not too familiar with, but I've heard it's really awesome, <laughs> to doing research in the history program. It's really up to you to uh, collaborate with our faculty here. Um, one really unique factor about Linfield is again, pushing students to explore. We want you to explore the world around you and outside. Uh, we will pay for your first round trip airfare to any one of those countries listed right there. We really do feel that travel helps expand students' horizons. So whether that's for a January term one month or longer for a full year, we'll pay for that first round trip to send you anywhere in those countries right there and back home again. Um, we have over 50 clubs for students to be a part of. Over 75% of our students do live on campus. So uh, Linfield really is home. So we want students to be engaged, involved and having fun activities to do. So we've got lots for students to do, um, whether that's through leadership, uh, clubs, performing arts, or our four sororities and three fraternities. Because we do have that three-year living requirement, um, we have a variety of different housing options for students to choose from. One thing, if you wanted to bring a dog, cat, fish, reptile, uh, we do have a pet-friendly dorm here on campus. So if you wanted to bring them, you could definitely apply to live in Jane Failing. Once you reach junior or senior living status, you are allowed to opt into one of our on-campus apartments. 
We are Division Three NCAA um, athletics. The list of our athletics are there. Uh, fun fact, Linfield's football team is the longest. We have the longest running winning streak um, of football seasons of any NCAA division champion team. So, you know, if you're interested, please fill out an athletic form. Those are our deadlines and dates. We have no test score requirement or application fee and we can be found on the common application. Um, just some facts for students coming out of state on average, actually with our robust financial aid, students are actually finding Linfield, a private institution comparable to some of the public uh, institutions here in Oregon. We are allowing tour, uh, visitors to come on campus. So, you know, sign up for an in-person tour and we'd be happy to sit down with you face to face. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. Our next presentation is from Verto Education. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, there we go. So Virto Education is definitely a little um, different than the other colleges presenting today. So with Virto Education, you can take that you know, traditional route if you're so inclined to go straight from high school to a university setting. Um, with Virto, we do things a little bit differently. So instead of going straight to a university campus, you're taking those freshman college classes and courses while you're traveling around the world. So you're taking your classes in the morning and then you're snorkeling in Fiji in the afternoon or hiking a volcano in the rainforest of Costa Rica. So it's a little bit different. We're really putting that study abroad um, feel front and center for students. So I'm not gonna play the video because it's super choppy on Zoom, I apologize. Um, so Virto, our, our semesters, we offer freshman college semesters or full year um, options for students. So you are earning fully accredited college credits. So those general freshman classes that you're going to have to take um, unless you're a very niche major, but we're, we're offering those semesters in other locations. So we have six different options for you. Those are all international except for our one, which is domestic in Hawaii. Um, we're putting experiential learning at the heart of each of our semester options. Our mission as an organization is to bring higher education and international travel more, um, to be more streamlined, more accessible for every student. So that really breaks down into our three main pillars, which is the first best first year of college being the first. The second is admissions to a great fit school, which talks about our college partnerships. And then the third pillar being an affordable college education. So the best first year of college, um, there's a lot to unpack there. This can mean a lot of things to different people. Um, this is looking at our semesters in general. So we have two different types of semesters, one of them being our on-campus semesters and one of them being our field semesters. So these do differ in um, a couple different ways and I'll go over those in just a sec. The heart and soul of them is the same in the sense that um, academically you're earning 16 college credits. Those are those freshman gen ed credits and you're with your professors so that your classes are being taught by uh, Virto instructors it's very small and supported classroom. So 20 to 25 students max, you're traveling around these countries with your Virto cohort, with your group. So you're with your professors, your program leaders, um, it's all experiential learning. So really bringing the learning, learning outside of the classroom as well as keeping it inside and just making it more hands-on in every way possible. Um, aside from academics, we do a lot of different um, excursions. We're going on trips, um, group trips and a lot of different fun things as well, because it is pretty exciting. We want to make sure you're getting the most of traveling abroad. Um, we do have support services for our students. We do have um, on staff, or sorry, on, on location staff, uh, five to one student to staff ratio. We also have affinity groups and a purpose finding workshop weaved throughout our semesters to help students gain clarity and just confidence in general life matters. Um, so these are our six locations that we offer. England, Italy, and Spain are what we call on campus. Hawaii, Latin America, and South Pacific are in the field. So the campus semesters, you're in big cities. You're in Milan, um, London, and Madrid. So you're in these vibrant hubs. You're staying in a student residence with other Virto students with your group. You guys are taking those classes together. You're um, commuting to class. So it's very much like that study abroad feel. You can see um, some of the course options that you have to choose from. So you're taking four classes. It's pretty traditional in a lot of ways um, where you take your classes during the day, you've got evenings and, and weekends for um, free time for yourself. These are some of the excursions that we're doing in London. Um, some of them are just like day trips, some are group trips um, all together. So it's definitely like a, like a big family still, but a lot of independence there. 
And then the field semesters, these are block schedule, both academically and location wise. So um, for example, South Pacific, you're in Fiji, New Zealand and Australia. So it's one month per location. So we're staying not in big cities, but we're in smaller villages. Um, we're working hands-on with local community members on projects relating to the classes you're taking. So very, very hands-on, um, more adventurous in a lot of ways. We're staying in base houses. Um, we do homestays, although not this year, unfortunately. Um, so similar in the, the core of the semesters, but different in a lot of ways, just depending on what you're interested in. Um, some cool things that we do in South Pacific, of course, very on the go, um, very just adventure based. So the second pillar is where our partner schools come into play. So this is pretty awesome. So we actually partner with over 50 universities across the states. So what that means is when you apply to Verto, you can simultaneously use that application with us to apply to up to five of our partner colleges. So our application is free, it's non-binding, we have a rolling admissions, um, we have a college counseling team that will work with you to really make sure your, your college resume is super strong to send off to these schools. Um, there is a quicker turnaround with these colleges um, and it's a holistic admissions review. If you're not interested in any of our partner schools, it's no problem, we'll work with you and make sure those credits will transfer over. These are just a few of our partner colleges. Um, pretty awesome variety, but like I said, we have over 50, so definitely check that out on our website. 27 of those do guarantee admission based on um, certain requirements determined by each school. Um, here's just a sample of those colleges. So essentially, if you do a Verto semester or two um, and keep a certain GPA, these schools will guarantee your, your acceptance, which is pretty awesome. So affordability. Um, ooh, I'm going to go back. We aim to be as affordable, if not much more affordable than a traditional four-year university semester. So our semesters range depending on location from 15 to 25,000. And we do offer a lot of opportunities for students to bring that cost even lower. That tuition does include food and lodging and excursions. It does not include flights, um, but we do accept federal financial aid, any external scholarships. And we also offer opportunity grants and um, International Leadership Award as well, which is our internal scholarship. So definitely scan this code if you want more information. We are on Instagram, um, definitely follow us. And that is my time. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And our next presentation is from Lewis and Clark College. Hi, everyone. I'm just gonna get this going. Great, okay, I hope you can see that. Um, so I am Serena Fursina. I'm a Senior Assistant Dean of Admissions at Lewis and Clark College, a private four-year residential college. Um, as I mentioned, we are in Portland, Oregon, just six miles from the city center, and we are proud to be one of very few liberal arts colleges with that city access and the opportunity to take advantage of all that the city has to offer. On campus, we do have an intimate class setting with the opportunity to get to know faculty. And as you can see, we have about 2000 undergraduate students. Our average class size is 17. And that is starting with your intro level classes, which are fairly small and, and give you the chance to, to really work individually with faculty. All of our classes are taught by professors. Um, we don't have graduate students teaching our classes. I find that faculty really go above and beyond to get to know their students, um, to engage in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Um, and faculty are actively involved in research and include our undergraduate students in their research opportunities as assistants. So most of our students are coming from over a thousand miles away, um, really from all over the US uh, and about 10% of our students are international students with another 120, um, which are TCKs or third culture kids, students who have lived outside of their home country or country of citizenship for over a year. Um, we are proud to have, like I said, students from all over and a really representative population um, for Portland especially. Our students are just as involved inside the classroom as they are outside of the classroom. And that is through a variety of things, but one of those is our 100 plus clubs and organizations. Um, they do range from our varsity athletic program. We do offer 19 varsity sports, 10 women's and nine men's, and we compete in the Pacific Northwest Conference. And um, we are a division three school, so we don't award athletic scholarships, um, but you have that chance to, to compete at a higher level in your college career. 
Uh, they also include artistic activities, our theater program, um, which is an option as a major, but also as an extracurricular activity, um, our improv clubs, acapella groups, our quirkier clubs, the gaming clubs, the, um, the, the kind of fun and goofy like cheese club, what you like to hear traditionally is a, a liberal arts college club. We beyond the city of Portland also, of course, have access to the Pacific Northwest, um, the beautiful Pacific Northwest. So we're just about an hour and a half from Mount Hood in one direction and an hour and a half or so from the coast in the other direction. We have a great program called College Outdoors that takes students on outdoor excursions um, all over the Pacific Northwest. So backpacking, hiking, kayaking, rafting, you name it, they do it. Um, and they also have all of the gear that you could possibly need um, and, and rent it out. So if you want to go on a trip with a, a group of your friends for spring break, that is an option too. Um, College Outdoors also runs our new student trip. So that's a great way to get involved um, and, and to meet new people before, oops, before you even step foot on campus. Sorry, spoiler alert there. Um, so we are also really well known for our overseas and off-campus programs. I think one thing to mention is the accessibility of our programs. So financial aid follows you, merit and need-based aid covering the cost of your time at Lewis and Clark also covers those same costs for a semester up to a year abroad and credits transfer automatically. So you're not missing out on a semester of coursework, but it's really built into that four-year plan. So finally, our application process, we are a common application school, we do have a holistic approach to admission. So we are considering each piece of who you are, um, and what you have to offer and, and contribute to our community. Um, we do require the common application transcript school report, teacher recommendation, a short answer essay, uh, to get to know you a little bit more and to get to know your fit for Lewis and Clark. We have been test optional for over 30 years and plan to keep it that way. So test scores are completely optional. Um, if you submit them, if you feel confident about them, great. If not, don't worry, you don't need to submit them. Um, and we do also offer optional interviews. We are open for visits right now. They are on a very limited basis um, for our rising seniors, but we'll offer some more opportunities this summer. Um, and we do have a robust virtual visit program. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Finally, take this link, um, check out who your admissions counselor is and get to know them. And I apologize, my dog is running at the front door. Um, so hopefully you don't hear her, um, but um, you should definitely reach out to your counselor and get to know who they are and, and ask them questions. And with that, um, thank you so much for taking some time to learn more about Lewis and Clark. And um, I hope to see you in some of our virtual visits. Awesome, thank you so much. And our uh, final presentation of this session is from the University of Oregon. Hi everyone, I'm gonna share my screen here. My name is Emily Carmichael. I am with the University of Oregon. We are based in Eugene. Um, I am waiting my, for my presentation to load, so I hope you can see it, but I'm gonna give it just a minute here. Um, so. Um, we are located in Eugene, which is really ideally situated in between the coast, the Cascade Mountains, and the city of Portland. So it's a great location where we're based. We are a public liberal arts and research institution. We have a student population of just under 23 total students. That's including graduate and professional students. But if you're just looking at our undergraduate student population, it's about 19,000 students. So um, it's a great community. We like to call it a big, small school. So you get all of the opportunities of a large research institution while still getting that great community on campus. And you can walk from one end to the other within 15 minutes. So it's really to get easy to get around. Here you can see that we have 168 different academic programs to choose from. I always like to start out by highlighting that we don't have any impacted programs. We have all the resources to get our students out on time and that is always our goal as well. Our most popular way to start out on campus is actually as undecided. So if you're still exploring your options, that is highly encouraged. You actually have until the end of your sophomore year to make that decision of what you wanna study. And about 30% of our students will start out as undecided on campus. 
We are a tier one research institution. We're actually a member of the AAU or the Association of American Universities. Only about 60 schools are selected for this honor. It's great company that we keep on this list, a big source of pride for us. And we're selected for it because of our research opportunities. There's a ton happening on campus. About 75% of our student population is getting involved in research opportunities on campus. I know sometimes we think of research in the sciences with a lab coat and you're gonna find great opportunities for that, we actually have a cadaver lab that's on campus and built into our undergraduate human physiology department. So it's a really unique opportunity for students to get at an undergraduate level. Um, and then also keep in mind that's going to be across the board in any area of academic study. Our highest research budget is actually housed in our College of Education, which I think is really kind of a fun fact. So just know that no matter what your program is, you're going to find opportunities to get involved in these research opportunities. If you see a professor who's getting involved in something that you're interested in, just speak up and let them know because they'll always have students involved. Once the world starts opening back up again, we have amazing study abroad programs available to our students. We have over 300 different programs, to over 80 different countries to choose from, and almost 25% of our student body will study abroad during their four-year experience. Students who are interested will work with GEO, which is Global Education Oregon, and that's our study abroad office, and they'll help students set up whatever it is that they're looking to do. Um, we have our own faculty-led programs as well as affiliate programs. We even have two pre-freshman programs and we will be running one this summer that goes to London. So we're really excited to get that book back up and running again. We also have over 300 different clubs and organizations on campus, um, everything from academic clubs, social organizations, opportunities to get involved in volunteer work. They're not major specific. So if you wanna get involved in something outside of your program, you are highly encouraged to do that. For example, we have many different music ensembles and you don't have to be a music major to get involved. One of my personal favorites that I love to highlight is we have a live action battleship game in the pool. So you've got some kind of fun ones to check out as well. We are of course, division one Pac-12 for athletics. Big sports for us include football with our connection to Nike. Our uniforms are different on the football field every week, which is always fun to see. Basketball is another big one for us and track and field is our biggest sport. Eugene is known as Track Town USA. We've hosted the past three Olympic trials right on our campus and all of our track and field facilities just got a makeover. They are unbelievable. I would definitely encourage you to take a look at those after this. When we're looking at your application, we're going to look at your application using a holistic review approach. So all of these factors that you're seeing here will be considered in the process. We are now test optional moving forward. So whether or not you have those, you can choose to send them or not. That's totally fine. We do not need them on file in order to make a decision about your application. We now have the Oregon guarantee as well. So whatever tuition rate you start at, you know that your tuition rate is going to stay the same for your full time on campus. And that's guaranteed for four years for four year programs and for five years for five year programs because we do have those through our architecture school. But keep in mind, this really helps to estimate costs. You're also automatically going to be considered for scholarships when you apply for admission. Those are going to be based on your academics. So keep in mind, you can pull those up online if you wanted to take a look at what they are for this year. Here is my contact information. I will also share my information in the chat, but I am happy to be a resource for you as you're going through this process. I know sometimes it can be a little bit stressful, so my hope is always to alleviate some of that for you. So please reach out and let me know what I can do to help along the way. Thanks so much for your time. Have a great day and go Ducks. Excellent, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, we now have a few minutes for some Q&A before the session is over, so I'd invite all of our presenters to come back on camera and um, a question that you all can answer in the order that you presented is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process. So we'll start back with Southern Oregon University. My advice would be to start early if you are a junior. Perfect time to do it, uh, the longer you put it off, the more daunting and the more difficult it gets. And next was Eastern Oregon University. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, I would say um, there's a lot of different schools, a lot of different opportunities out there for students. So don't be intimidated to reach out, um, ask for questions about a program, about a university. Um, there's really a lot of awesome opportunities. So don't be afraid to reach out. I think 
that's a great skill that you're going to need when you get into college. So um, if something sounds interesting, reach out, connect with people. I would say a lot of people are very, very friendly. Hi, um, I would say consider a lot of, you know, universities and colleges around this, the nation are very diverse. Think about where on the spectrum you are. Um, you've learned a little bit about who we all are and where we fit on the spectrum, you know, whether that means to you, what you know, do you like big schools, small schools, um, you know, cities, rural, keep that in mind when you're thinking about college choice, rather than just like, throwing applications like wall, like spaghetti on the wall. Well, spaghetti on the wall. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with all that was said. Um, just, I think being, yeah, keeping into in consideration, this has been a pretty crazy um, year for everybody. So yeah, just be like kind to yourself and don't stress out too much about this. Um, I think like trying to stay organized about it and yeah, looking at what are your top priorities, but also like not spreading yourself too thin. Um, don't be afraid to think outside the box and, and maybe do something, uh, yeah, against the, the path of what everyone else that you know is doing. I would absolutely agree with all of that. Um, so my two cents to add on is, I'm really taking the chance to explore with virtual options. Right now, so many schools have great virtual visit programs and it's a really great way to, to explore from wherever you might be. And so you don't have to visit a school. My dog is like on cue today um, when I'm live. So, you know, just, just take that chance to try out virtual options right now while they're available um, and then narrow it down and, and visit places specifically. Um, I will also say, a, something I sat through at a University of Oregon um, information session when I was applying to colleges um, was that you, and it stuck with me all of these years, um, is that colleges are not like a perfect match. Um, like you're, you're not gonna find one soulmate in a college probably. Um, and so, you know, just don't stress it too much. You really can't go wrong. There are so many great institutions out there. Just do your best, but it, it's probably not the end of the world if you don't find the exact perfect school. school. I always like to share the don't stress one as well. So I just want to emphasize that. But I'll also say, I think if you have the opportunity over the summer before your senior year to start writing your essay and get those things prepared before senior year kicks off, I think that's a great way to utilize that time because there's going to be a lot happening in your senior year. And that way you have that part out of the way. Awesome. Well, we have time for one more question. Um, and that is... What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? I would say my favorite event is what we call Snow Fiesta. Uh, every spring when it starts to get really pretty on campus with all the purple and pink blossoms and the trees and everything, they'll actually go up into the mountains with some trucks and truck a bunch of snow back down on the campus and set up a little ski or snowboard jump. Um, it's, just, it's just cool to see a lot of people out uh, on campus you know, throwing snowballs and in their t-shirts and having, having fun. Yeah, and I apologize. I, I believe it's glitching a little bit on my end, but um, my favorite tradition is just going to the athletic events. We have a football team and uh, volleyball and basketball that are very popular here at EOU. So just painting your face, getting on some UU swag and supporting your fellow classmates. That's always a fun thing to do. My favorite tradition I think at Linfield is one that the art department actually puts on every year or tries to at least every year. Um, art students create a giant wooden sculpture. Um, they use different mixed media arts, but basically it's made out of wood and they'll put it out on one of the IM fields and they'll light it on fire. And that's called the burn. So it's a controlled burn, um, very well supervised, but I think it's a nice creative way for students to kind of bond, have this really fun tradition on campus. Um, since Virto education is, is relatively new to the higher ed world, we don't have a ton of longstanding traditions, I would say, but I think that's one thing that's kind of cool is each semester that our students are going on, they have that chance to kind of make their own traditions. Um, one thing that does come to mind 
for our South Pacific location is when students do arrive to Fiji, they have a traditional Fijian um, ceremony. It's a kava drinking ceremony, which is what Fijians do when they're welcoming new visitors. So we sit down with a lot of the locals and um, do that. And I know that's always a highlight for our students, which is pretty cool. One of my favorite events, um, and it's timely because it was just this past weekend, is our international fair, um, where all of our international students and scholars um, basically celebrate their home countries um, or regions through food, dance, um, song, etc. And um, you know anyone can participate, and of course everyone is welcome to attend. Um, I wanted to share our um, tradition of going to the football field. So to get to the football field, it's actually off campus. It's about a mile away from campus. And they say you go over the river and through the woods. So it's like a parade that goes from campus to the football field on game days. And it's definitely an amazing tradition to be able to take part in. So um, that's always the one that I want to highlight. Excellent, thank you all. And we are uh, just about out of time for this session. So thank you all for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there'll be a very quick uh, survey, four question survey, we'd appreciate your feedback. And this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So please do sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this recording as well as other um, session recordings from this fair at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day.